Good evening. Um, it's a bit of a late one tonight because, um, well, just because that's how the day's gone, really. I can't, uh, it's half term, so it's all a bit up in the air. The two books for today are for slightly older children. So my eight and nine-year-olds have um, been reading them and loving them. I will do them in the order that they were read, so no particularly special order, because they're both fabulous. Um, the first one is quite short. Um, this is um, a silly book of poems by the lovely Angela Wrigley. And um, if you go on the website, um, you'll see an interview with Angela. She's local to us um, in the next county. And so she's an extraordinarily prolific writer. And she writes, um, she's sort of 50-50 adult fiction, um, uh, mostly historical fiction, um, all excellent um, and I've reviewed a few on the website if you if you look her up, um, but also lots of children's books. And we've read, I think, I think we've read most of the picture books. Um, so she has Cal the Cave Boy series and a Barley series, which are about a sheep. Um, and we love those. But this was just a bit different. So I thought I'd just show you some silly poems. And it's only, you know, there's not thousands in there, but my um, son quite enjoys... Oh, this is Cal the Cave Boy on um, the bookmark. Um, my son quite enjoys Silly, you know, and um, he's not... Um, oh, he's a slightly reluctant reader. And so, um, you know, a short a short poem um, it is, is probably about enough uh, for him. And this was quite good because they were, they were silly poems, but they had lovely rhyming, you know, he just loved the rhyming. And if he wasn't sure of a, of a word, you know, the rhyming allows you to do a little bit of guessing, doesn't it? Um, there are some longer ones, um, but they're all quite, I mean, Terry the Toad is quite old, it's a particularly, um, we really love Terry the Toad. And it inspired him to do some, uh, he loves artwork. So he then went and did a kind of illustration of Terry the Toad. Um, there's quite a few animals in this one. Um, so it's just lovely. I just think if you want something light and fun, if you do have a reluctant reader, poetry is a brilliant way to get kids to read, even if it's limericks or jokes. I mean, we had... Um, I can't see them now. Uh, we had um, jokes on cards. They were Osborne cards. And I used to put them in... I still do sometimes, put them in their lunchbox. So they would just read with their friends, you know, five stupid jokes. And I think that's a really good way to get kids to read. They don't even know they're reading because it's not a book. And so um, my son definitely engaged with that because it was a poem and they were quite short and silly and funny. Um, he didn't consider that reading because he associates that with um, being bored and being forced to do things that he doesn't want to do. So it's a great way to get kids to read. My daughter is not a reluctant reader. She's not a dead keen reader like I was at her age which I'm still don't quite understand but if you can get her hooked on a story she very much likes to know what happens next and so this next one um, was right up her street it's called Escape from Nettle Farm by Justin Davis and the second book has just been released so I will put a link up to that on the website um, and this one was illustrated by Clara Daly um, and this is lovely. I mean, the illustrations, I just have to say, this was perfect for my eight-year-old. She's not a massively confident reader. And so breaking up, you know, there's a lot of illustrations in here, actually. And it really did um, just allow, you know, for a little bit of, of... It looks visually very beautiful, and that helps enormously. So this is about a little puppy who's um, <clears throat> born on a farm with a nasty farmer. And he escapes, and he's found by a lovely family... Um, and then the farmer tries to get him back and so there's a bit of drama um, there's a bit of um, fear I suppose because the farmer does find them and does sort of claim the dog but um, it turns out that this the farmer's known for not being very nice to animals and he's also stolen from someone so the police are able to um, arrest him and things so that there's a lovely mixed there's a lot of um there's quite a lot of drama i think but it it was um really well balanced it's a lovely story i mean who doesn't want the puppy to find a lovely home um and it's quite funny because it's um a lot of it's from the puppy's perspective um so he it's as if he could talk but he can't and i quite like that because you know in real life dogs don't talk to you and so no matter how many films you've seen where they do 
Um, I quite liked that we could hear the dog's thoughts, but we, there was no pretense that the dog could talk. Um, so it's nice. It's just a lovely um, mix. Uh, the family we meet are quite fun. So, um, and we meet some of their friends as well. So I can see this developing. He's an unusual dog. I can't remember the name of the breed, but one of those huge dogs. Um, no, it's gone. Um, so he's going to grow really enormous, not a St Bernard. Um, so he's going to grow really big. And I, I think there's lots, you know, I can see uh, excitement in his future. Um, they call him Harvey. And, um, oh, yeah, it's just really nice. It's just got everything you need, really. Um, it's got all of the um, thrill of the chase. It's got all of the, um, you know, little girls like to read about puppies. Um, and it's got... Um, it's got quite a few characters in that you get to know quite well. So Millie, the little girl, um, and her her family. So she has younger brothers and, and her parents. You know, we, we start to get to know them a little bit. And I, I suspect we'll, we'll find out more about them in the next book. But it's just lovely. I think um, my eight-year-old enjoyed it very much. I think uh, she needed some help. Um, you know, it was a stretching book for her. As I say, she's not a terribly confident reader. So I would think probably from seven onwards, you'd, you'd have a good time. Um, and I would think you could read it up to, you know, a fair old age because it's really lovely. It's got lots going on. Um, and I can't really wait uh, to read the second one. I'm really looking forward um, to what might happen next. He's a Newfoundland. Sorry, I've just found it. He's a Newfoundland. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to the next one. And, and definitely my daughter's asked. If, if if we can read the next one she really enjoyed it and the illustrations for me made it particularly special because it's very colorful um and not too um frightening i guess for the for the not so confident reader so there are two books for um reluctant readers um who are a little bit older so we're talking primary um junior key stage two